once upon a time, about 70 million years ago, there was a hot spot in the middle of the Pacific Ocean who decided it was time to play architect. As the plates moved, the Hawaiian Islands were formed. In the clouds, in a volcano. In a three-story house, we felt it a lot. It shook the entire house, it was crazy. We're the Farnsworths, a travel nurse family of five on our sixth year of adventuring. John is an ICU travel nurse and I am a travel nurse recruiter. Together we're road schooling our kids, making a million memories and sharing our experiences with you because there are no ordinary paths. You get to choose your own way and we're here to encourage you, whatever that might be. When you hear Hawaii, you might think beaches. But I bet the second thing you're gonna think of, if not the first, are volcanoes. Welcome to the most active volcano on the planet, Kilauea. If you visited here anytime between 1980 and 2018, it's very likely that you have seen red hot lava. It was continuous, continuously flowing at that time, but since 2018, it's been a little bit sporadic. They have about a couple of eruptions per year, and it's normally here in the caldera. Uh, it doesn't usually interrupt anything else around here, uh, but it can. It can be really big and really devastating as you might have seen in the previous video we did in the Pune district, it has done a lot of destruction over the years, but also with that destruction comes new land and it's constantly changing. All the national parks have their own specific appeal. Um, I have never been at an area where I was hoping to kind of see what could potentially turn into a natural disaster because even though this can just have little eruptions and things like that, there are certainly some bigger ones that have happened. Currently there are no eruptions and no visible hot lava anywhere on the island, which we were a little bummed about, but I was able to find some pretty epic stock footage of past eruptions right here at Kilauea and Mauna Loa. So if you're curious like I was, I've got you. Let's just take a minute to thank our sponsor today, Brooklyn Bedding. As you know, if you've been around for a while, we have been partnering with Brooklyn Bedding for the last year and a half or so, and we absolutely love their products. One thing we knew we were gonna miss a ton in Hawaii was our Brooklyn Bedding mattress. We haven't been without a good mattress in years. At least we'll have these pillows with us. John and I love our Aurora Lux mattress at our house in Phoenix. It has the cooling technology just like our pillows and it really helps us sleep more comfortably. We had the Dream Foam Essential mattresses in our RV, which we absolutely loved. It is a king size Dream Foam Essential as well as Dream Foam Essentials queen sizes in our garage for the kids to sleep on. And they have made a world of difference. We've been working with Brooklyn Bedding for the last two years and tried almost every product as well as visited their factory in Phoenix. As one of the very first companies to roll up a mattress and ship it in a box, it was really cool to see how it's done. And it's even more exciting when you see that box on your front porch and you get to watch it expand into a full-size mattress. Beyond mattresses, they also have some bedding, they have a really great weighted blanket, they have bamboo sheets which are really comfortable, and of course, their pillows, which we absolutely love. They come with a 10-year warranty and a 120-night sleep trial. 
We also have multiple dream foam essentials in our RV for when we're on contract away from home and not on an island in the middle of the Pacific. Make sure you check out our link below. They have stuff for your RVs and for your home. It's really awesome. And if you put in No Ordinary Path as your discount code, you're gonna get 25% off of your order, which is pretty awesome. Okay, let's get back to the video. This fourth grader here got us into the park again. What are we gonna go check out? I... <laughs> I'm pretty sure we should go see what's inside of us. We are uh, doing a hike today of the three of us. Mom's here too. Welcome to Kilauea. We've made a total of four trips to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park so far. There's so much to explore and I am just so fascinated by the sheer power of nature that brews just below the surface. We are on Crater Rim Trail. So here's the lowdown. Apparently the, the Kilauea does go off a couple of times a year ever since 2021. So there is a high likelihood that we'll see lava while we're here, but not today. They did elevate it to an orange. So it goes green, yellow, orange, red. It was orange last week because they had a surge of earthquakes, but now it's back to yellow. So we'll see, we're here till May. So I really have a feeling we have a good chance of seeing lava at some point. But for now, it's really cool just seeing the steam. There's steam vents everywhere. We're gonna go down into the caldera. Stacked rocks. If you have time, the Icky Trail is a must. Talk about feeling like you're walking on a different planet. The caldera is unlike anything we've ever hiked before. In a lot of ways, it felt like a glacier hike in Alaska, only this wasn't ice, but solid land that cracked and layered like frozen water. It's a magical landscape. <laughs> it really is. In the clouds. In a volcano. Now it looks like you're in the rainbow. The light right now is absolutely stunning and it's just making all of the little colors of the flora that is down in the middle of this old volcano just pop. And I hope you guys can hear me because of the wind. I'm sorry about that. We didn't bring the mics because I didn't want them to get wet. But look at these flowers. As Chloe says, we have entered back into the deep, dark woods as we start to begin our back out of the caldera. Are you excited, Chloe? You excited to go up and up and up? Oh, burst of energy. Don't trip over a root. That's where we hiked, guys. You can see the trail. Isn't that cool? And then it just disappears. We have made it back to the pavement. Um, it's really neat to think that this was once part of the park that uh, was likely an area that cars and stuff could drive on. Because as I flip it, you'll see, you know, there's the road and you can tell how overgrown it is. And even some of the old signage. And we're thinking that what probably happened is that this was all kind of made into trail system after the big eruption and it changed the landscape here. And this is where you can kind of see that it, it collapsed. Um, and they obviously put this railing here, but all along here, I don't know if it went out that way into the caldera. We'll see if we could find some cool footage of the collapse um, because they do have some, some really amazing time-lapse footage of it on the National Park website. You can see how much overgrown it has become. As I walk down here, you can still see the line, you know, of where it used to be. So most of this over here is probably got uh, asphalt underneath of it. We're on a little date. We have downloaded Guide Along, formerly known as Gypsy Guide, and there is a tour around the entire island. Let's start with the basics about Hawaiian geology. I'm sure that most of us already know that the Hawaiian Islands were formed by volcanoes. 
gets extra steamy today because it's a little chilly. That feels so good. It feels good, but it's like really wet. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> It would be a really good idea to bring a rain jacket with you to this park. Um, I don't know, today is just kind of like drizzly anyways. It's frequently it's, like that here. Like it is. Even if down in Hilo or if you're lucky on the Kona side and it's gorgeous, up here it might be just like this. It's 58 degrees outside right now uh, and for Hawaii that is really cold. It does make for really awesome steam vents. Yeah, you could really see them. Yeah. Okay, so we're stopping at the furthest point that you can go, and there used to be a visitor center here, but now the earth is too, what was it, unstable? Yeah. Since the 2018 yeah. eruption. Yeah. See that? Oh. That's, That's the Mauna Loa. Mauna Loa yeah. yeah. This is such a neat place, but it's just a wonderful illustration of the destruction that is slowly being taken back over by nature. They're so cool. definitely worth, worth parking and going over to see the arch and we are 4,000 feet below where we started up on the road so the temperature difference is 20 degrees warmer down here than it is up near the, the Calera. It feels great. My, uh, my legs and arms are grateful. A turtle! A turtle and a baby! Yeah, and you can take the baby out. So cute. He's rainbow. You ready to go get your badge? Yes. <laughs> Let's do it. Sulphur Banks, 0.3 miles, we got this. We're on our way to go see the sulfur rocks. I don't know what that is. Well, apparently they have a lot of different colors. So we're gonna go check it out. Is that what I picture? Once upon a time, about 70 million years ago, there was a hot spot in the middle of the Pacific Ocean who decided it was time to play architect. And as the plates moved, the Hawaiian islands were formed, starting with Kauai and then Oahu, and then Maui and its islands. Big Island was last. And what's really interesting is it's not done. There's still islands being formed even right now. There's one that's 20 miles off the coast that's being formed. But they say that the, by the time it reaches the surface, it will probably connect with the Big Island. The last time that John and I were here, we commented about how you can't smell anything, but you can here. <laughs> you can smell the sulfur here. <laughs> You know what it smells like? It smells like Yellowstone. <gasps> <laughs> You're right. Yeah, so a week ago it was in orange. Oh, okay. Um, so we had like over 300 earthquakes in one day. Wow. But now it's back to yellow. Oh, it's back to yellow now. Okay. Orange and we had the earthquake feeling. Yes, that week we had that week it turned orange and we experienced for the first time ever an earthquake. An earthquake. At first it was 6.3 reporting uh, magnitude and then they downgraded it to 5.7. But for a family who's from Kansas, it was, it was crazy. I didn't have the camera running at the house at the time, but I did record right after it happened. And in a three-story house, we felt it a lot. It shook the entire house. It was crazy. You can look up from it. And I was terrified enough to the point where I started to scream. Yep. 
Well, we've never experienced anything like that. We're not from California or anywhere that there are we're earthquakes. From Phoenix. Yeah. Well, now we are. She, well, she's from Kansas. But we grew up in. I grew up in Kansas. Never felt anything like that. The park is amazing to drive and hike around and see the incredible power of the Earth's movement all around. From areas you can't visit anymore due to sulfuric gases, to roads that are no longer existing as they sunk into the ground, and old fields of lava that have been long since cooled that you can actually walk across, the sights are always changing. It's neat to think that this place could be totally different if we were to visit 30 years from now, just as it would be for someone who visited 30 years ago from today. We hope you've enjoyed coming along with us today through Volcanoes National Park. Be sure to go check out last week's vi video on the Puna District because it's black sand beaches that were created from the volcano. My glasses are fogging over. I think it's time to go. <laughs> Stay tuned for next week. We've got lots more Hawaii content coming out. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you out there.